It's been almost six years since this happened, and I finally reached a point where I can start talking about it and dealing with the emotions that I have suppressed since then. I discovered Elise, my former girlfriend and mother of my daughter, cheating on me with one of her clients who she was caring for as a personal support worker. Elise and I were a perfect match. We meshed together so well that I never had any worries or doubts in our relationship. No matter what challenges arose in our individual lives, we always faced them as a united team. Our bond was incredible, our careers were stable, our blended family was thriving, and I could never have predicted what was about to happen. One of Elise's favorite things to do was to visit her clients in the hospital, bringing them homemade treats to lift their spirits. I admired this practice and thought it was a truly wonderful gesture on her part. I always encouraged her to continue doing so whenever she could, as it made a hugely positive impact on her clients as they battled various illnesses. Many of them were far from home and had no family or friends nearby, and Elisa's compassion and genuine desire to bring a smile to their faces meant a lot to them. Her workplace referred to these visits as compassionate care visits and compensated her for an hour of time spent with patients. However, it was not uncommon for the visits to last two or three hours, yet she would only be paid for one hour. One evening, she mentioned that she would be going to visit a client in the hospital after dinner. She explained that there were some financial issues at her workplace and they wouldn't be able to pay her, but she still wanted to go. I agreed with her decision because the money wasn't important. What was important was bringing some happiness to those who needed it most during their time of struggle. It was out of the ordinary for her to leave on a Sunday evening, but I didn't think much of it. I had plans to watch a show on TV while she was gone and then cuddle in bed when she returned, but that's not exactly what happened. She left at 7 p.m. that evening, and by 10 p.m., I still hadn't heard from her, which was not out of the ordinary. Feeling tired, I sent her a message saying I was going to sleep and would see her once she returned. However, at 1 a.m., I woke up needing to use the toilet and realized she wasn't in bed with me. I quickly checked all the familiar places in our house. Firstly, the couch in case she decided to sleep there, so she wouldn't wake me up, then the kids' rooms, and then even the basement. But she wasn't anywhere. I started to worry and called her, thinking perhaps she was in a car accident or something bad had happened. When she didn't answer, I started to panic. After about 10 minutes, she returned my call, clearly annoyed with me. Why are you checking up on me? I tried to explain that I was worried because it was late at night and I hadn't heard from her. It was a school night and we both had work in the morning so it seemed odd for her to be out so late. My concern was brushed off as she told me she would be home whenever she got there. It was an unusual reaction. She returned home after half an hour, fuming and accusing me of not trusting her. I attempted to explain that my phone call was not about trust, but rather my concern for her well-being. She continued to argue with me. But I didn't want to fight, so I suggested we talk about it in the morning. It was evident that she was still angry, so I decided to sleep on the couch for the night. As I was downstairs trying unsuccessfully to get comfortable on the couch, I could hear her talking on the phone upstairs. However, I couldn't make out what was being said. Suddenly, a small voice in my head whispered, Something's not right, you should check her Facebook messages. Until that point, the thought of violating Elisa's privacy had never crossed my mind. I had never had a reason to snoop around before. But as things got stranger and stranger, my instincts were telling me that something was not right. Her laptop was charging in the spare room that we used as an office. I grabbed it and opened Facebook, where her username and password were automatically filled in from the browser. Let me just say, I was truly not ready for what I was about to uncover. As I was going through her messages, I came across a conversation between her and the client she had visited. He was a 60-year-old quadriplegic man, 31 years older than her. Their messages were filled with plans to leave me and be together, taking our children, my son from a previous relationship, her son from a past relationship, and our daughter that we'd had together, with them. The messages were full of declarations of love and promises to be together forever. I carried the laptop upstairs and confronted her about the messages. She played dumb, insisting she never wrote them, which was a clear lie. After that, she quickly gathered the kids, it was almost four in the morning by then, and left without telling me where she was headed. The aftermath was devastating. My entire life had been flipped upside down in an instant. 
We had never fought before, and now suddenly, this. Even now, six years later, I'm still struggling to process it all. Elise filed for full custody of our daughter, submitting a 32-page document filled with false accusations. However, in a recorded telephone call, she eventually admitted to her lies. In the process of everything we lost our home, my car was repossessed and I was fired from my job for taking too many days off. The overwhelming destruction I experienced to my life is impossible to adequately describe. In the beginning, I admitted myself to the hospital because I hadn't eaten anything for a whole week, except for a few sips of water. I couldn't keep anything down. The staff at the hospital were incredibly supportive and connected me with a social worker to help me process what was happening. This led to prescriptions for antidepressants and anxiety medication and regular sessions with a therapist that I still have once a month. I have never been given any answers to why she did what she did. She stayed with the man for two years and is now in another relationship after cheating on her client. They're set to be married in nine months, and that's where I am now. I'm in a serious relationship once again, but it's only been recently that I've truly felt like myself and an equal partner. My current partner has spent a lot of time helping me overcome my low self-esteem, anxiety and depression, and encouraging me to see my own worth. She is truly amazing. And in a strange way, I am grateful for this situation because it has shown me what a real partner should be like. However, I would never want anyone else to go through something like this. Not even my worst enemy. Well, except maybe Elise, but that's the only exception. The last six years have been a challenging journey, but it has been fulfilling in the end. I have gained a deeper understanding of myself, a wonderful partner, amazing children, and a fulfilling career. However, there are still significant debts due to my previous relationship ending, with most of the financial responsibility falling on me. But it was a necessary lesson for me to learn. Thanks for taking the time to listen. That's the end of today's video. If you like this content, please do the things to the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye for now and take care.